When you think of the most solid BFFs in Hollywood, Oprah Winfrey and Gail King's friendship probably comes to mind. They've been attached at the hip for decades, and through all the ups and downs of their lives, they've proven that nothing can tear them apart. From the very first time we started our friendship, stayed up that first night and talked all night long, she has always been happier for me and everything that's ever happened to me. Some people think their tight bond is cute, while others think there's got to be something strange going on between them. We'll let you decide which side of the fence you're on as we explore some interesting facts about Oprah and Gail's friendship. In 1976, Oprah was working as an anchor at a Baltimore news station. And Steve, we're also trying to keep our viewers informed of what's When a snowstorm rolled society. through, Oprah invited Gail, who was a production assistant at the station, to stay at her home instead of Gail making the treacherous 45-minute drive back to her own home. Gail told the Huffington Post, We didn't really know each other, but she was just that kind of girl even then. They spent the entire night chatting and were able to discover so much about each other. And when Gail mentioned she didn't have any clothes with her, Oprah answered, you can wear mine. And when Gail added that she didn't have any underwear either, Oprah replied, you can borrow mine, it's clean. In the early stages of their friendship, they bonded over their quirks. During an interview with the Oprah magazine, Gail said when they met, she felt like she had finally found someone she could relate to since she grew up in an all-white community. They discovered they had the same musical taste, with Gail being obsessed with Barry Manilow and Oprah being a fan of Neil Diamond. Oprah said, It's that whole being the odd girl out thing. We didn't fit into everybody else's perception of what it's like to be a black girl. Oprah's early years were filled with many struggles. She was raised by her grandmother, her mom, and her dad and bounced around between their homes for most of her childhood. She told the Washington Post she started acting out at a young age because she was craving attention and love. She felt neglected because her mom was so busy working as a maid, and when Oprah finally met Gail, Gail filled one of Oprah's biggest voids. She is the mother I never had. She is the sister everybody would want. She is the friend that everybody deserves. After catching her husband, William Bumpus, in bed with another woman, Gail filed for divorce and started the journey of healing herself as she prepared to raise her two children, Kirby and William Jr., in a one-parent household. When asked by Vanity Fair to name one living person she despises the most, Gail answered, I'm not a huge fan of the woman I caught with my now ex-husband on June 24, 1990 at 9.16 p.m., but I don't remember the details. Her divorce was finalized in 1993, and as the holidays approached, she knew she would have to spend New Year's Eve without her children for the first time. Gail told People magazine she called Oprah and told her she was preparing to spend the holiday alone, and Oprah wasn't about to let her bestie be down in the dumps. So four hours after their phone call, Oprah showed up at Gail's doorstep with a bag full of groceries and Stedman by her side. Stedman whipped up some spaghetti, and they rang in the new year together. Gail told People magazine she was so grateful to have them with her during that difficult time, and it's a memory she'll never, ever forget. And Gail has proven she'll drop everything to be with Oprah as well. Oprah told People magazine that one day she was feeling really down because she had been betrayed by someone. When Gail heard the disappointment in her voice during one of their many phone calls, she hung up the phone, told her babysitter to watch her children, and hopped on a plane to travel from Connecticut to Oprah's home in Chicago. When Oprah opened the door and saw Gail on her doorstep, Gail told her, I can't stay, but I just wanted to see your face. After making sure Oprah was okay, Gail drank a glass of water and left to head right back to the airport so she could return home to her children. Oprah's father, Vernon, married a woman named Barbara in 2001. Oprah, who's known to be extremely generous, bought the new couple a $1.4 million home in Franklin, Tennessee. Eleven years later, Vernon filed for divorce, citing inappropriate marital conduct. Vernon moved out of the home, but Barbara stayed due to financial issues, and that led to a battle between her and Oprah. 
As Oprah attempted to evict Barbara from the home, Barbara ran to the Daily Mail and told the news outlet some juicy details about Barbara also said Gail is very present within Oprah and Stedman's relationship, and Stedman is well aware that Gail wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. With how generous Oprah has been with her family and strangers, it's no surprise that she's very giving when it comes to Gail as well. When Gail had her two children 11 months apart, Oprah gifted her a live-in nanny. When Gail and her children moved into a 12-bedroom, 7,500-square-foot home in Glastonbury, Connecticut, local newspapers reported Oprah was the one who paid for the home. It was also revealed that Oprah had her own suite in the residence. Years later, in 2008, Variety reported Oprah plopped down $7.5 million to buy Gail a midtown Manhattan apartment, but were unable to confirm that rumor. When Oprah was bringing in the big bucks from her talk show, there were rumors that she wanted Gail to experience life as a millionaire, so she reportedly gifted her $1 million. When asked about the gift in an interview with the Seattle Times, Gail didn't confirm the monetary present, but she did say, you see how generous she's been with strangers, so you know how she must be with me. Let's just say I live a very, very nice life. Because of how tight they are, people automatically assume there must be something more to their friendship. And Gail and Oprah have repeatedly denied that they are romantically involved. I'm not lesbian. I'm not even kinda lesbian. And the reason why it irritates me is because it means that somebody must think I'm lying. Gail told Access Hollywood if they were more than friends, they would have no problem telling the world all about it. After her divorce, Gail has been single for the most part. There were rumors that she had a thing with U.S. Senator Cory Booker of New Jersey, but they appear to be nothing more than friends. So why can't Oprah hook her best friend up with one of her famous friends? It's not like Gail is picky. While co-hosting the talk, Gail talked about what she wanted in a man. She said she doesn't like smokers, she only wants to date someone who has natural teeth, who can make her laugh, and is intelligent. So until Gail can find that special someone, we're sure she's content with being the third will in Oprah and Stedman's relationship. From co-workers to friends to Oprah being the godmother to Gail's children, this is one friendship that continues to grow stronger and stronger. Oprah said, Ever since we met in 1976, we've been doing the same thing. Listening, talking, laughing a lot, building dreams, cheering, being a shoulder to cry on, speaking the truth, being the truth. Let us know your thoughts on Oprah and Gail's friendship, and thanks for watching RRG.